uh, the chair of the uh, Oversight Committee is on the, on the uh, screen, but now the chair does recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Chopper, the chairman of the committee, uh, subcommittee on environment for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for your great work uh, as subcommittee chair on energy. So, um, Chairman Glick, welcome. I know you and FERC must frequently consider the boundaries between federal and state responsibilities in our energy system. And I'm assuming that the proposed energy product reliability organization in Chairman Rush's bill would require significant federal state coordination. So can you give us some insight to how we should think about these jurisdictional divides? Thank you very much for the question, Mr. Tonko. Um, I think there are, again, I want to point to a good example, which is, again, the, the way we handle electricity reliability, the way the, um, uh, the legislation from the Energy Policy Act of 2005 addressed the issue is that gave FERC and NERC the authority over the reliability of the bulk power system, you know, the, the long-distance transmission lines, the, the big generation facilities and so on, and it gave the states jurisdiction over the, or essentially left to the states jurisdiction over the reliability of the distribution system. And um, uh, that, I think that's the way we're going to have to think about that on a going forward basis. The states have um, a, significant, a significant role to play with regard to the, the, the LDCs, the local distribution companies that provide natural gas to homes and businesses and so on, and factories. And um, I, I think if, they, if they, they need to play a very significant role in ensuring that those pipelines, the pipelines that get to the end of the system, so to speak, that those are also reliable. And so I think they're going to, they, 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 it's, it's an issue that, FERC and the states need to coordinate on, just like we do on electricity reliability. And basically the responsibilities of the federal government or perhaps this NERC-like um, organization? Um, I, I, so I, I think the, the, the responsibility of the federal government, the way the legislation is currently drafted, H.R. 6084, it doesn't make a distinction between the, uh, the, the, the local distribution and the, the, essentially the, the interstate uh, grid of, of, of natural gas pipelines. It's something that I would recommend that the commission, that the committee take a look at as it uh, proceeds in the legislative process. Thank you. And if NERC uh, partially serves as a model for this proposal, how has NERC been able to overcome some of the federal state coordination and jurisdictional issues that exist in the electricity system? Um, well, I, I think uh, NERC works very closely with, with a series of uh, regional reliability organizations that are spread out throughout the country that, that, that are are more focused on some of the local reliability issues. And I think NERC also uh, uh, plays a very big role in coordinating with NARUC, which is the Association of State Utility Commissions and the individual state commissions as well. I know, that, I know they, in fact, they spent a lot of time talking with them, making sure their jurisdictions, that they're working together on the same issues. Thank you. And even with this legislation, do you believe there will still be an important role for energy security planning and emergency preparedness by the state? Absolutely. You know, we mentioned earlier there's 3 million miles of pipes around the country, and, and, and I think the federal government, through, the, through this process established by this legislation, will address some of the bigger issues. But I think a lot of the local level issues are, are issues that are, that are already within the jurisdiction of state utility commissions, such as ensuring that the, that the local pipelines are operating reliably, that providing reliable gas service to homes, for instance, for heating and so on. Thank you. And Secretary Turk, welcome. Uh, the Departments of Cybersecurity efforts have required significant public-private coordination, but is there anything you can tell us about the need to improve coordination between federal and state partners on these reliability and cyber issues? I think, uh, Congressman, uh, it's an excellent question and right to focus on those issues of coordination, public, private, and federal and state and local as well. And we spend an awful lot of time, our CSER team in particular, working hand in hand with FERC, working hand in hand with others in the interagency, but working hand in hand with state and locals and make sure that we've got a full, uh, full plan in place to uh, provide the reliability and the cybersecurity. Everyone needs to be on board here. Right, thank you. And Secretary, I want to commend DOE for the Building a Better Grid initiative. This focus on our nation's transmission system is critical to achieving reliable, resilient, and clean electricity across the uh, country. But if our modern and reliable transmission system is very dependent on generation that may have unreliable delivery infrastructure, the whole system could crumble. So how do you see pipeline reliability and cybersecurity standards complementing the department's broader goals of building a more modern and resilient electricity system? 
So first of all, let me thank you, uh, Congressman, and others who supported the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, which gave us uh, $16 billion at the Department of Energy to work further on electricity resilience. That is a historic level of funding and support that we plan on using very effectively to promote the reliability, the security, the resilience more generally. Uh, electricity is certainly tied hand in hand with natural gas and with other parts of the energy system. And we need to be thinking of cybersecurity and reliability and resilience uh, all together and throughout the value chains and throughout uh, multiple value chains uh, as well. So just as the FERC and NERC model has worked well for electricity, we need to have mandatory standards from the Department of Energy perspective for other parts of our energy uh, spectrum. Uh, thank you to TSA for stepping up and having some mandatory standards put in place for pipelines. But we also think other parts of that value chain need standards, need federal standards, national standards, including refineries and other parts of that value chain as well. Again, having a coherent system in place so that we can uh, do what we need to do. Thank you so much. And with that, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Gentlemen, yield back. Mr. Chair, I know